So, dann bin ich einfach auf derselben, auf derselben Höhe. Hm? Hier bin ich. Hello, welcome to uh, the course Art Analysis 2, the third year course. Um, and actually, I planned this guest lecture today of Heidi Trautmann and also of Turan Aksoy as part of my class. And later on, uh, the plan changed a little bit and we shifted from the classroom into this conference hall. And I think this was a good idea uh, when I see now that ranks are filling up a little bit. So thank you for coming, for coming in, for joining. And already now, thank you, Heidi Trautmann, for uh, yeah, for willing, being willing to uh, talk to my students and to other guests. So who is Heidi Trautmann? She's a German from Königsberg, Eastern Prussia. And already early in her life, she has received an art education as a painter and sculptor in the 1980s. Then she also learned from a practicing art, uh, artist, uh, Ralf, Rolf Merkel, in the area of Munich, as I understood, three years. Um, later on, she collaborated with other artists and founded a yeah, artist workshop called Werkhof, so like one-to-one -one translation, work court. Art house. Art uh, house, yeah. So meaning a place where things are practiced, where things are done. Um, when did she come to Cyprus? 1999 with a boat, if I understood it correctly. Uh, and then very quickly she decided to stay in Cyprus. Uh, she became very quickly associated to the local art scene. Um, there's also a local uh, workshop, the Levantine, um, art this Levantine Art College in Edremit. So already 2001, she became member there. And she understood that there's something miss missing in North Cyprus, uh, meaning a documentation of contemporary, and maybe not so contemporary, uh, art, Turkish Cypriot art. And she began to conduct interviews uh, with her friends, with her colleagues. She went to exhibitions and uh, the interviews were conducted in a very casual way sometimes, I guess. And these interviews became the basis of her publications. Uh, there's actually many publications, but two, uh, I think, stand out, or three, and these are all there. Um, the first one, Art and Creativity in North Cyprus, number one, or volume one, from 2010, published also by the European Mediterranean uh, Arts Association. And then the number two in 2014. Um, she did many solo exhibitions, group exhibitions throughout this time um, in Germany and also in Cyprus. So very active. And yeah, uh, ironically, she received a cross of merit for her work about North Cyprus, but not from North Cyprus, but from Germany. Yeah, so she got a medal from the German government about what she does or what she did here for the Turkish Cypriot art scene and for recording and documentation of um, yeah, contemporary art in this island. And we have, uh, yeah, we have contacted each other and we have talked about what she could uh, talk about. And I found it meaningful to uh, title uh, this writing Turkish Cypriot art history because this is what she did and she uh, will tell you a little bit about how she did it and what kind of results she gathered. So, thank you for coming uh, to my class. It's very much extended now, so... Thank you. And now the stage is yours. Yeah. Whenever you need me to uh, assist you, you please let me know. inviting me. Thank you for welcoming me. And thank you to you to be here with me. Uh, actually, the artist and the art scene, they are my family anyway in the meantime. So we are among us within the family. 
So my artist friends, they keep asking me, what might you write about the art scene, the island's art and culture? Everything has a beginning and there's always a reason, a motive, why and when you start to do something. There's my curiosity I'm born with and there's my wish to understand. And therefore, I research things. But let me explain with some simple words. Let us begin with the very beginning and how it all became connected to me. First was nature, pure and untouched. Cyprus, an island with Mediterranean vegetation, mountain ranges, vast plains, visited by birds from other countries nearby, leaving some seeds with their excrements. Perhaps there were some land animals as well, which had arrived on floating pieces of trees. Then came the first man, the first human from the coast around the island, and he thought, good land, I stay here. He found caves in the hills for protection and he made his home there. He learned to make fire to keep warm and to cook his meals. He found clay near brooks in the valleys or wetlands, and he made his dishes and bowls and fired them in the earth oven. That was the beginning of culture. They went hunting and were looking out for intruders. Others sat in the caves and began decorating the clay pots with paint from plants and stones. That was the beginning of art. And when the hunters came home, they started to recount their adventures or any encounters with other species by painting them on the cave walls. That was the beginning of history of art and culture, which means recording and archiving important events. The first men and women did not only paint their adventures on walls, but played, danced them. They made movements and sounds, imitating them from their experiences in the surrounding world, from the wind, from the noise when a tree branch broke, how water flowed. They showed sentiments and happiness and death, and the way an, an animal approached its victim. Sorry, that was the beginning of theater. I'm sorry. I just need to put this one on as well. All right, there you go. Am I being heard now? <laughs> the same for music. They copied the voices of nature and put them in a row like beads on a thread. And they built instruments from material they found in nature, such as bamboo. When for my art books, I interviewed artists of all disciplines, I often heard them telling me that they learned from nature. The theater people, the theater people, they learned for body, from body language and mimicry they needed for their place on stage or for their art project by observing social behavior in the crowd. Just normal people in the street at daily life events amidst mass masses of people, nothing has changed. They still do it. How did people communicate in those distant days? They learned with time that the wind carried the, south, the sounds and they tried their voices under certain conditions in a deep valley on top of a mountain and they were beating hollow trunks with wooden clubs. That was the beginning of communication. The following generations improved the methods and tools and they amassed knowledge. They learned to create symbols and they put them in a row, cut them in stone or painted them on their walls. 
that was the beginning of literature. Today, we seem to go backwards with our communication using emojis and in literature by using collective words such as wow or I am frustrated. This so far as an introduction to make clear again that what we know today, what we practice today, is based on the knowledge and practice of those first people. Is based on all those things that happened between those days and today. On events that influenced the development of the human beings, of social behavior, of all sciences. I mean, racism, migration, be it due to the discovery and colonization of new countries the abuse of native people, the exploitation of natural resources due to wars, pandemics, evolution in all fields. In short, culture is made and destroyed by man under the reigning circumstances. All these events are rooted in our present culture and not to forget the cuisine of a country, of Cyprus, which is another creative form of culture. And if you want to learn about the culture of a country, go and talk to its people and go and eat where the locals eat, which I did and still do. My husband and I have been living on our sailing bo boat, Early Bird, for some years. 14 meters long, six years. We built it ourselves. We came to Cyprus in 1999 as a member of the Emir Rally the same year. We were all together 135 boats. The harbor of entry was Kyrenia. And then and there, we made a life-changing decision already after one week on the island, exactly at the viewpoint of the Five Finger Mountain, looking down on the Mesauria. When we came back to Kyrenia, or rather Gerne, from Alexandria in Egypt, which was the last stop of the rally, we found a piece of land in Yeshiltepe and built our house. It was not only the climate and nature, but the complexity of culture, the peaceful and French, friendly Turkish Cypriots. And my husband said, for centuries they are being used to foreigners. They will give us a handicap. With our bicycles, we explored the island. We were used to do so along all the countries we have been visiting in the Mediterranean during all those sailing and traveling years. But soon we had to buy a car, as the Cypriots were not much used to yet to bikers. It was kind of dangerous. However, it helped to explore the old cities to travel through the narrow lanes. And as I did not find any mention of art events in the then only newspaper Cyprus Today, I had to go and look for art venues myself. I started to talk to people, which is my way of getting around wherever I am. I've never been shy about it. I wanted to know about their culture, their art, their art activities, their literature and theater. Because what you learn in guidebooks is by far not enough. And, as we've just stated, culture is made by people. So I went and looked for those people who made art, who made theater, who wrote poetry and short stories. But I also talked to women doing embroidery or baking bread. I talked to the carpenter and the, the vegetable seller as with their functions, they also add to the culture of a country. I came across the, for me, 
first exhibition in Nicosia. It was Emin Chisinau's exhibition at the Haider Pasha Mosque, the former St. Catherine Church, built by the Lusignan in the 14th century, used as an art gallery, the HP Gallery. I don't know if you still remember. Open for cultural events since 1994, but closed when the borders opened. At least I believe that was the reason. I went there for the opening, had my first handshakes with artists, also with the then president, Ralf Denktas. I had met him before, but from afar. He had welcomed us at Emir Rally Stalers at a reception at the castle. I was very impressed by Emin Chisinau's work, and we got to talk, and he introduced me to some of his colleagues. This is how I got to know the first local artist, and from that time on, I was a regular visitor at their vernissages because they kept me informed about events. But at that time, there were not very, not very many yet. I am an artist myself, and meanwhile had joined an art group in Edremit. That was in 2001. It was the beginning of the Thursday Artists. We shall talk about them later. By that time, I had my first book out about our sailing experiences of six years with early bird in the, in the entire Mediterranean. And thus, I got to know all available bookstores, art venues, and also bookstores where at that time only very few. A second English newspaper opened, Cyprus Times, the sister of Kibbersle. And I was approached by the editor to join their team. And I suggested that I write about the art scene as among the foreign residents, nothing was known about the local artists and news about events were not being published. That was the starting point for me to interview artists, first for Cyprus Times, later Cyprus Today approached me. And so my interviews, reviews on cultural events and announcements were regularly published. However, when a new editor-in-chief took over and wanted me to reduce my text for the arts to 300 words, I quit and was invited to go along with Cyprus Observer, which later stopped to publish with the death of a dear old colleague of mine, Ali Yaleman. I was sorry, yeah. From that moment on, I opened my website and brought all my inform informative work online. I became a member of the local art association, Emma, in its early days, about 2003. And we discussed together my interviews plus other cultural articles in a book. And Sera Shonya, our most active president, took it upon herself to design the book. That was a good cooperation, I must say. My greetings to Sarah. We had it also translated into Turkish. All my books are, are the art books are being in two languages, English and Turkish. I had plenty of material in my archive and with the support of the presidency, the book was launched in 2010, together with an exhibition of all, of all artists involved. It was a first, since also foreign artists who have lived and worked in Cyprus for many years were included in the book, in, in volume one. Yes, so far, these were only exhibiting among their own crowd in small restaurants or hotels, they did not seek the local attention. Both communities were not cooperating, which I failed to understand. This was my first book on the art scene. It had taken me five years, three kilos. I 
I wrote for other English papers such as Zoo Magazine, Pegasus Onboard Magazine, which appeared with the growing, growing foreign population and growing tourism. Besides reviews of art events, I started a column with titled Creative People in Our Midst, where I also brought interviews with people other than artists. They are just as important. They have their own important part in building a country's culture. For the second art book, this is the green one here, uh, nearly four kilos. <laughs> I had started to interview theater people, poets and writers of mostly short stories, research writers on history, past and past events, and biographies. Novels were hardly written then. I included in my books also cultural institutions, universities, by communal art activities, which started after the opening. The second book took me another five years of hard work to finish. I published this book myself, but with the financial support of the government. There was only one printing company in North Cyprus which could do books of this size and with hardcover. In the meantime, it is no longer a problem. I launched the book again with an exhibition with theater po po posters going back to the beginning of local theater. And for literature, I displayed the books of all poets and writers interviewed. Also included were the works for, uh, by, by caricaturists and another, an amendment uh, on a young generation of artists, which had in the meantime uh, developed after the first book. Let me tell you about my meeting and interviewing all those creative people and artists. I got to know them and their work on the occasions of exhibitions through the art associations North and South. At that time, we had very good activities and cooperation between the two art associations. They were curious. They wanted to get to know each other. Through, and also through research, I was looking for them myself and recommendations. They often were also teaching in schools, at universities. Hardly any of the artists uh, could live from their art alone. I visited them at their studios and we talked sometimes. And we talked. Sometimes I brought a friend with me to help me with interpreting to avoid misunderstandings. But, mo but most of the artists spoke English when they had studied abroad. I had the chance to thus meet the first important ones, the first important art teachers who had a great impact in the art scene and on individual artists and art students as well as on established principles of education. This is also valid for other art forms of theater and literature. Most of them had lived through the hard and troubled times of Cyprus. Their childhood was not an easy one, and their parents had done everything to give their children a good education. When I go through the pages of my art books today, there are so many who have already left the Garden of Life. And I am glad that I could give them and their work a home in my books, since we do not have a museum. A museum where their work and their background story should be available for the younger generation to see and to learn from, and also to supply information to travelers visiting the island. With respect to our theater, I can say that I have hardly missed any play in the past with directors and actors such as uh, Yasha Ersoy and his colleagues who have done much to create and form North Cyprus theater. 
But also here, I am sad to say that we do not have a proper theater building. More than once, buildings were available, were being started, but plans had to be given up for financial and political reasons, just in the case of an art museum. With the years, other active theater people in other communities have contributed to the good reputation of the local theater, from amateur theater to professional theater. Yearly theater festivals and our theater plays and actors winning international recognition and awards. And to mention our Derman Atik, Isel Sailane, and Ali Umanel as art director and playwright, Nehir Demirel as director with new ideas, Osman Atesh as choreographer, actor, dancer, and director as of recently. But so many more would have to be mentioned here, but you can find them in my art book, volume two. Here I would like uh, to emphasize the importance of cooperation between visual artists, theater, and literature. That's why I mention all of the uh, art disciplines. With respect to literature, we have a large community of poets, poetry and short story writers. Biographies became the trend. And there are very good research writers about Cyprus' past, but novels are starting, uh, are starting to be written only now. During the pandemic, many books have come out. I think writers were the only species of humans who were not really complaining when we had to endure the lockdowns. We just have celebrated the 40th anniversary of the North Cyprus Writers' Union, in the yearly Alinesem Award ceremony for selected writers and poets was held. Uh, in these associations, you will find all those who have been part of the literature scene in North Cyprus. I had been invited in 2017 by the Faculty of Fine Arts of a university to write an app to write an, an, a text about the visual artist based on the experience of my research. It might give you an idea of some high points of my interviews. Unfortunately, I have not had the strength anymore to publish a book or to write a book for about uh, uh, four and about our music people. I have done quite a big number of reviews of musical events especially to support the young talents coming out and coming on stage regularly with their teachers and concerts. A big bunch of great talents with all the concerts of our yearly music festivals organized by dedic dedicated Cypriots and Cypriot organizations. I, don't, I think I don't have to mention, especially mention that we have somehow reached or rather overstepped the summits and that we are on our on a downward drive in so far humanity and society as such is concerned and the arts show it clearly i have seen many artists with with their senses highly tuned to show the confusion of people disaster ugliness, pain, emptiness. It is important. Yes, it is very important because the arts go where humanity goes. I have here my article, Visual Artists in North Cyprus, written in 2017. I, was, I felt very honored that they asked me uh, to contribute something uh, for their uh, archiving, and uh, I must say, I'm I'm not an art historian, nor have I lived here long enough to fully grasp the suffering in the past, 
their development from a childhood under enormous stress and in family situations during and after the Second World War, later the political internal events which led to the division of the island. And now, after the never-ending reunification talks in a dead end road. I have lived alongside them for, at, when I have written this, for 17 years, have had the occasion to get a glimpse into their personal lives, saw them working in their studios and as art teachers, and have witnessed their doubts, their searches for new roads and their way to success. With some, I've been working together on different subjects and in our own art group, others I met now and again and never lost touch with them. I will let my memories spe speak, will in the course of my commentary recite my artist friend's words concerning their work, their philosophy of working, their hopes and their disappointments. The intriguing history of the island had in many ways an important influence on the local art. The knowledge alone in the many races and cultures that have come here to trade or to live and work still has an impact on the ways of artists thinking. Who am I? Where do my ancestors come from? I've heard often said during my interviews, we carry in us a microscopic picture of our ancestors. I could be a Phoenician, an old Egyptian. And when I paint with my subconsciousness wide open, I descend to other deeper levels. What we have learned through our present education is but a very thin layer on top of ancient knowledge. This said Feridun Ishiman, born in 49 in Kuchi Kaimakle, also said by others in a very similar way. How far back should one go to find the roots of North Cypriot visual art? Back to the old ages, or the Hittites, Phoenicians and Egyptians, their hieroglyphs, grave goods, figurines found, the Ottoman art of miniatures and calligraphy, Yes, you will find them, these influences, sometimes as a reference to the goddess of fertility. For example, as symbols in paintings or in ceramic works, heritage never forgotten, especially in ceramics, the Bronze Ages have found a revival during the last years. The past is very close, just separated by layers of soil under our feet. The influence from Turkey, or rather Ottoman times, was always present. The Ottoman art has a very special place in my heart, be it the decorative art, especially in ceramics and architecture, the wonderful world of miniature paintings and calligraphy. They have found their place in, Cyp in Cyprus as well. To mention is Özden Selinge, born in 46 in Altinova, writer and painter who created her miniature paintings of, of Cypriot village life. She is a philosopher, and she said when I met her about her use of colors, yellow is the color of the sun, the color of life and also of passion. Yellow can make you happy, but also sad. Happiness and sadness are so close, just like day and night. Calligraphy is an important element in many painters' works, but especially Gune Pir, born in 49 in Paphos, brings this art form into a beautiful, harmonious accord with the human stories he paints of his country's past. The texture I create, he said, on the canvas is my signature. That is me, that is Gune Pir. I work very hard, sometimes with fierce obsession, 
with my knife to obtain the fine texture until it has the life I have in mind, the base to tell the stories of the past. The first notable Turkish Cypriot artist in the meaning of Western understanding of art is Ismet Vehid Güney, born in Nicosia in 23, who was known and thus mentioned in literature to be the first Turkish Cypriot artist and art teacher to have a solo exhibition in Cyprus in 1946. It is an interesting story of a man who got so deeply interested in art in his, in his young years. Uh, and I know his story of from, from, her, from his daughter, Nirgün Güne, who is an artist herself. And uh, it is very interesting that this man who had no proper art education found his, his inspiration in art books. Uh, he later had education in Turkey. He went to Turkey to the Turkish Impressionist Ibrahim Chali and worked with him. And when he came back, he became an art teacher. A new generation grew up with different understanding of art. From the mid-20th century on, onwards, young talents were sent to ac academies in Turkey or England. One of those is Cefte Chadas, born in 26 in Nergisli, an artist who has turned 90 years recently and will live to be 100, I'm sure. I'm so sad to say that he, in the meantime, has passed away. I, I have often visited him and his wife, Jale, also when he was living alone. I still have a silver coin on my kitchen counter he once gave me. He told me his story. You can also read that in my in my art book. But this is a story of how how they had to go about to get a proper art education. They were doing everything to learn and to find ways. I want to make a step away from circumstances that influenced the visual artist of Cyprus and mention one artist who was, as he was called, the father of many Turkish Cypriot artists. That was Ali Atakan, born in 1940 in Paphos. A devoted art teacher, well loved and remembered by most. And just to mention the few of his former students I know about and who have made him proud are Emin Chisnel, Güne Pir, Ismet Tatar, Ruzen Atakan, Osman Kiten, Mehmet Ulubatle, Ümit Inaje, Hikmet Uluja, Kemal Ankaj, Baki Boaj, and so many more. He told me, those of my students who were talented and interested, I made them come to my own studio as one, as one only hour of art education in school in a week was not enough. And I worked with them, gave them material, as most of them were poor, but I was very strict and it served them well. He had a poor heart and died in 2007. I will never forget those hours I sat with him on the floor of his studio in the loft where we went through hundreds of his sketches. There are so many other artists. I could mention Grünen Atakol in 50, uh, 45, born in 45. We, she said, we did not have any art books or material. We collected art sections in the monthly magazines and we copied them. Our art teachers were very traditional and conservative in their approach to art. Green and Atakul studied art in the United States where her talent exploded in the free atmosphere of teaching and understanding art. Back in Cyprus, she became an art teacher, also well remembered by many people in high positions today. 
her philosophy, her philosophy still is, in art, nothing is wrong. I make art for the sake of art. Her art is very exceptional, so clear in light and color. Yes, and I would like to mention still, I cannot mention all of them, but another two or three, yes. Ihan Mentesh, for example, born in 35. He was the first uh, abstract painter. We just had an, an exhibition and a book brought out about him for the um, day, International Day of Art. I liked him very much. I often visited him. And uh, he went to study uh, art in, in Turkey. And, but they were very poor. When he came home for holidays, he had to work in a ceramic factory. And there he realized to make the forms he has seen in Turkey in, in um, museums. In, and, uh, so, and these forms he had, he worked with, were then realized in his painting. Turkish in those years of, of terrorism and unrest, Turkish Cypriots developed a strong need to uphold their culture as a sign of national pride. And so I wrote down all the collected leg legends and wrote short stories. Yes, he wrote, sculpted and painted in his very special way. In many Turkish Cypriot artists' works, we find the evidence of those years in, of hardship. It made their art unique, developing away from external influence, away from Turkish and Western art. Ashik Mene, bought in 55 in Larnaca, brings it to the point. Every human being has a personal tragedy, one less, one more, depending on the ability to see and to feel. The soul is a room full of dirt and past experiences. For me, the need to create has to take me through this hellish disorder, has to strip my observations of unnecessary loads of rubbish up to the creative process. That is when I'm cleansed, like the phoenix raising from the ashes. He was the principal of the Anadolu Art College, but now concentrates fully on his art in his lovely studios in Old Nicosia, where his many students love to join him. Still, up to our present times, we find our artists trying to come to terms with the past. During all these years of peace talks, the memories could not come to rest. Ismet Tatar, born in 46 in Inunu, has dedicated herself for many years to the soil of her home country, to lost property, trees lost to fire, people lost, freedom of women. She came to many crossroads in her life and always reoriented herself, experimenting with new material, making her work her life. During those times of reorientation, I turned my gaze to the material under our feet, to the, stone, to the soil, to the stones, eternal dance of the ages. I want to understand the history of our earth, and so I examined her folds and colors. Today, Isma Tada has turned to the art of making paper and do art with it in close connection with nature. A researcher into history is Inji Kanzo, born in 37 in Nicosia, who for years literally wandered through and over the old copper mines to collect bits and pieces of a very important part of Cypriot history. An immensely important installation she created from these souvenirs mounted on handmade paper and creating the Kopak Tunnel. I don't know if you remember that from her last exhibition, that it's an enormous work. 
she became the first paper artist in Cyprus. Now an independent paper art society has been formed in 2015. She said to me on the occasion of our interview, the life cycle of paper is the same as of human beings. It is born, it lives, changes, dies and is reborn. Paper, an element to carry time. One of our highly interesting artists who never stops surprising me is with his experimental and conceptual projects is Emin Chisenel, born in 49 in Malia. Projects which he plans right down to the last detail on a separate wall in his studio. And I will remember a project he had in mind, which I found sketched to his wall. I want to make a big declaration for peace a peace show for Cyprus, and I call it the Chosen Tree. People will be invited to come to the Bella Pais Abbey, perhaps with a concert, and a helicopter will drop my Satan envelope over the Chosen Tree within the Abbey to give the effect of a lighted candle, my candle for peace, my contribution towards peace. Yes, he said when I asked, yes, I'm an explorer and adventurer. I'll mention the last one and the others, please, you will find in my books. By the way, I want to mention that my art books are part of your library here in Arukat University. And you can go and check and see them and read them. Baki Boac, a sculptor and architect. I would also call him a philosopher. We often had very good and deep talks. He had turned down a, jo a job in Istanbul because he thought his country would need him in those times of trouble. I am not a politician. Politics are only words. I need to construct and demonstrate my understanding of balance. I am balanced. When you are not balanced, you are sick. Politics are sick. Another important sculptor, as already mentioned, is Sarah Shonya, born in 72 in Limassol. An important figure in the art scene of North Cyprus, leader, teacher, activist, curator, editor of art books and archivist. I really don't know how she manages to do all the work she has on their shoulders and still finds some time to do her own work. Not enough, I find. Typical for her way of thinking is her comment, chaos is a catalytic agent for energy, my energy. Chaos is a state where everything is turned upside down. My homeland is in the state at the moment, but it gives a new significance to my identity as a human, to my identity as an artist, because I can fight for something against the chaos. Thus, I find myself a constant, in a constant state of loading and unloading. I find that very interesting because I found this with many artists I interviewed. I cannot uh, talk to them all, which I have in this. Um, you have the file. If anyone is interested to read the entire text, he can get in touch with you and get uh, the text on online or through me. Also in my book, I mean, I have my friend Esa Ketchishi sitting here. She's also in my book, but you will understand. You know her most probably better than, than all the others, so I don't have to mention her here especially. Uh, there are still so many, but you, I think you get impatient because I still have to come to one part You see, 
to my third art book, which I completed, which I started in the pandemic, during the pandemic years in the meantime, 2020 and 21. And with the help of Roya and Omid, I could publish it. And uh, it is a story of uh, my art, my own art group, the Thursday Artists. And I wanted just one page. And I would like you to please switch on the, uh, the video and to show some of the artwork while I speak to you uh, on the screen. Yes, please. I personally, to finish this art, this uh, article I wrote, I personally believe that art is the most important link to all parts of our world. The language of art is shared and understood by all nations and knows of no borders. Therefore, art education should be of utmost importance on all levels of education because it develops the human senses we need to know and understand before we can judge and act. During all these years of exploring and following the art scene in North Cyprus, I have been fighting for a museum where people can learn about the past and the present of its culture and its artists. I am asking you to support this vision and let it become a reality. Now about the Thursday artists. The title is A Road of Friendship. In, Octo in October 2021, I launched my third art book, The Story of My Art Group. I have attached my press text, but would like to mention right now one thought or rather fact that leads to my statement that foreign artists are an important part of the local art scene. That those who visited Cyprus as travelers and later stayed as residents for many years have painted the beauty of Cyprus, landscapes and their characteristics of the island's culture. While most North Cyprus artists, not all, many of them, painted their pain the heavy problems, history, society, and its problems, society and its problems. Though I think that altogether from the art and culture history point of view, they complement each other. From the Middle Ages on, is, there is proof to be found in the art collections of Rita Severis at C, at the CVAR Museum in Nicosia South. Over many years, a group of artists, that is, I and my friends, living in the northern part of Cyprus, have worked together, shared their knowledge and experience, and also models for over 20 years. They have traveled many paths together in the process and have helped each other in myriad ways. They are a group of people with very colorful backgrounds, Cypriots and other nationalities who have lived on the island for a large part of their lives, people who in one way or another have left an imprint in the soil I am waiting, sorry, I am waiting for the video to show some of the work. So you get an idea of my art group of the Thursday artists. 
but please let me uh, continue to read. The shoes on the cover are a symbol of the road they have traveled together. A road of friendship, work and appreciation. Some of the art group members have recently departed this life and I thought that they should not be forgotten. This book is a tribute to all the members of the group, past and present and was created during the pandemic years of 2020 and 21. The only time in all those years that the situation forbade meeting and working together. Besides the urge of rip, to reproduce and hunt, the urge to make art is as old as humanity itself. It is a vital educational tool that fully develops the five human senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. The artists of my art group, I don't know if you know them, are Gönne Natakol, Margaret Helen Golding Bothworth, Marilyn Bothworth, she was from Bella Pais, Catherine Bailey, she was from Hizarke, Muriel Clutton, she was living for 30, over 30 years in Kayalar, Gul Seven Atai Coles, Christina Hessenberg from Chatalke, Anne Hughes from Bella Pais, Hilary Jemal uh, from up, up the mountain, Deirdre Kirk from Edrimit, Susanne Lemazal from Bella Pais, Sue Monvit, Bella, now she's from, from Kami, Monika Otto from Kami, Ilse Marie Petzold from Lapta, Michael Rain, I don't know where he lived, Maxine Scheiler from Chatalko, Ruth Smith from Edrimit, and Heidi Troutman. Christine Venediger, Edremit, and Tunesa Yayale from Kami. Now I come to my conclusions. Okay. There are many conclusions I can draw, but firstly I want to say that I am very happy that I grew up in times without any interference with my personality. Without internet, iPhones, etc. I'm glad that I always was in direct contact with nature and I could thus draw my, my conclusions alone. So did many of those I have talked to you about today. They had nothing but their wish to do art no tools, but with a vision that drew them along. And they had the knowledge of their past, which often led to questions of identity. Many of them pursued the road to learn more, made it their theme of working, philosophy, which leads me to the conclusion, does the availability of all tools and knowledge of today make us better artists? Another important conclusion I drew, I have mentioned it before, we need a proper home for all the arts so people can go and find their answers to their questions about the past. Just like our body and our intellect have the genes of our ancestors, so carries culture, the body of our society, the genes of its past. Thank you for listening to me so patiently. You may still watch this and I'm here ready can you dim the light a little bit so you, they can see?
So if you have any question to ask me, if you want to know something, I'm ready to answer as much as far as I can. Or have I not left any uh, any answers? No, any questions open? <laughs> I've worked as a journalist, and I'm used my working philosophy as a journalist was always don't leave any questions open. So if you have no questions, I'm I'm happy. But let us see here some of the artwork of this of my art group hello my name is katrina thanks for being with us and sharing your story you just mentioned that as a journalist you followed your philosophy so I would like to ask, what's your life philosophy? What are your rules in your life? I did not understand the question. What is your life philosophy? What My, are your life rules? Because you mentioned as a journalist, you followed your philosophy. So what are this? My philosophy is to never let any, leave any questions open. So be, do research. Uh, don't mention anything which I, which I was without having followed this to the very root. And uh, I, I think it was very important to, when you write about art and art events and about people, you need to sit down and talk to them. You need to ask them uh, about their childhood, their upbringing, their everything. They must trust you. And they, and I'm very happy to say that the artists I interviewed, they trusted me and they gave so, so much information to me that I could write this book. And with, with, their ex, with the interview, with what they gave an information to me, you can understand their art. Thank you. Because sometimes my voice is very high and <laughs> without microphone is enough. Yes, I did. Uh, thank you for uh, you are a very long time with us as a friend, as a journalist, as a historian. Because we are speak a lot sometimes all together, but if we are not published as a book, Everything is uh, like flyer. Uh, I want to ask you, I, I like to ask a lot of questions, but uh, in my opinion, it's not enough time <laughs> yeah. to explain all of this. Uh, Thursday artist group, because uh, if we are painting only uh, for ourselves in our studio, uh, we are not uh, interactive and uh, we are not uh, understanding each other, in my opinion. And it is really important things for uh, group activities and uh, mental discussing and philosophic discussing. I want to ask you, Thursday Artist Group, as I know, you are uh, very long years. You are, over, over 20 years. Yes. Can you uh, explain a little bit more things about uh, about uh, Guru? Yes, you explain member of uh, yes. <laughs> the artist and uh, already we saw their artworks. But uh, I want to learn how you decide why Thursday and something small things but for me it's a little bit more important why it's not wednesday or why it's not sunday thursday <laughs> something like that thank you 
<laughs> okay. Uh, we actually, the group, we, f we found each other in 2001. I joined them in 2001. And since that time, we have been regularly working together, first on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. But uh, the name came, was invented because we did, um, we did exhibitions, we did events, we wanted to have a group name. And so we just said, because we always met in lately on Thursdays, uh, at least for working together, and we, we named ourselves the Thursday Artists. Uh, it, uh, working in a group is very important because you need also critics. You get blind when you only work for yourself. So an important part of our working together was uh, putting our work down and discuss it and not be angry when somebody said something we were completely open. We trusted each other and said, okay, it is like this. We can only learn. You, my, my understanding is you make one mistake once, but uh, when you learn from it, and that's, that's very important to make a mistake because you learn from it. I mean, as Grönan Attakol, you have seen her work, uh, said there is no that you cannot make any mistakes in art because it is an interpretation of what every individual person sees and how how she sees it. If it is a little bit chaotic, so she sees it or her, he sees it like that. So one should not um, condemn something uh, when you think it's not your way. You have ex to expect the language of others just as well as your own work and just give them a little bit uh, a helping hand and say, okay, think about it. But uh, yeah, critique is important. Also important, I think, is going out and to see other art. We regularly went to exhibitions, we went to, we hired a bus and went to, uh, other places. We went to see studios, we talked to artists and they showed us their work. And we went to see museums, not in the north, but in the south, Leventis Museum and CVR, CVAR Museum, which I recommend highly because there's, there's also, there are also work from um, the Middle Ages, uh, beautiful from travelers about Cyprus, also, our uh, artists from the north, they have uh, worked there. Uh, it's, very, it's really to, recommend, to, to be recommended to visit this museum. Uh, we exhibited together, and all of us, we have professional, most of us are professional artists. They just, they got together because they wanted to work uh, with a model. And they shared a model. And so you could see the, the different outcome of one, you had a, one model and everybody saw it differently. And that is one of the things to accept the language of each artist. And uh, the other point was to, to work together. Everybody had a different uh, priority. We have one who likes to paint with pencil and, and pastel landscapes. For example, like, like um, Christina Hessenberg, her artwork is exceptional. Uh, she is a great artist. And she gave, she made workshops for us. She explained in detail what she sees and how she does it. She's also very good in, in printing, like you. I like your printing work, always have liked it. Um, and she gave a workshop. Christina Hessenberg, she had very, uh, very much uh, experience and uh, knowledge of this. And she, uh, in, in four weeks, uh, she, uh, she showed us I mean, I've been doing printing early age on, but the others did not. And so we started from scratch. We started from the very beginning and worked on it. 
Then we have another artist who does, uh, who is very good and fluent in collage art. She has studied collage art in Istanbul with a with an artist, and she gave an, an a workshop, and that inspired people. And we drew our own conclusions what to do with it. So we combined uh, what we learned in these workshops in our own way, especially, for example, during the pandemic times, we could not go out, we had no, we could not work together, we could not visit, uh, I mean, I, you knew, the, you, you know yourself the time of pandemic, how restricted you were. So I told them, get out all your old drawings, which you don't use and add it and do some collage work, cut them out, build a new story. And they enjoyed it tremendously. They were so happy to do that. And go out, work in outside, work in, in, in uh, we went to Bella Pies, we went into the forest, we sat by the sea and we're drawing. We always have a sketchbook with us and also uh, we do, I, I introduced to show uh, art uh, work from museums. I've traveled a lot in my life, so I have a big archive of the MoMA, of uh, the museum in New Orleans, of other museums of South Africa, Johannesburg, and so on. And I showed them, we, we made a regular uh, meetings in front of the tele on, on in front of the screen, and I showed them my my photos. My uh, and so we learned from each other. Everybody brought something in. Does that answer your question? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, because uh, I remember in uh, Ismet Vahid uh exhibition hall. You open, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, six years before, and uh, you explain how you touch the people heart, because uh, this uh, this reason is important. Uh, yes, of course, uh, everybody uh, walking their way, but uh, we need more col uh, collaboration. Uh, as you say, uh, you are visit uh, your uh, with your groups, uh, Greek Cypriot Museum, and you know our <laughs> ideology because uh, North Cyprus uh, already uh, not have a government uh, art museum yet. I wish one day we are uh, opening this. Yes, and, let's work together. Yeah, and this is really important. It's collaboration and believe the people. Uh, which uh, people, uh, arts lover, not as only artists or art students or art professor. Thank you so much, Andy. Yeah, there's one point I would like to add because you mentioned my my exhibition when you came with your students to my exhibition. That was the first two, and I would like to mention especially how important it is to take art classes to exhibitions and explain and work with them in front and say, look at them and discuss it and let them find their own interpretation. For example, now Sera Shonya does it in Famagusta with the, with the art exhibition of um, portraits at the uh, Ralph Denktas Cultural Center. They invite students of uh, different age groups to come and and, and uh, she explains it to them and sh they discuss it. This should be done more often. Students should go to exhibitions wherever and visit studios. This is my recommendation. And you were the one of the first ones to do that. Okay. As I, as I said, these books are available at the library here. 
this is these are the books i but they are in german because i was i said that the cuisine is also a very important part of culture i wrote a book about the world travel cookbook <laughs> and this is a book about no cyprus my way with short stories and poetry of local poets so it also belongs to this series of a culture and history of art in north cyprus i'm very proud to be here i'm very proud to be part of you and be part of it and i am a cypriot i'm a kibrisli <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, actually, um, I, I wanted to comment exactly on this one, what you just mentioned now. During your talk, um, you uh, talked of yourself several times, we. Um, so it was understandable that um, your identity is associated with this island and specifically yes. with the north of this island. Yes. Um, and I have a question in relation to the subject matters um, of yeah, the Turkish Cypriot artists on one side and the travelers, the contemporary travelers that are part of your Thursday group or were part of your Thursday group, on the other side. Is there any uh, possibly difference in subject matters, what they concentrate on or maybe not? Yes, as, as I said, uh, the 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 travelers who came in the Middle Ages and the travelers and the residents for 30 years and more, they are doing, the, they are painting, they are interpreting the beauty of the island. They don't see the trouble. They, they see it, they have heard about it, but it doesn't interfere with their artwork. They are not troubled by it. It doesn't sit in their souls. So they can, without any problem, paint the beauty of the island and the transparency, transparency of the light. I mean, when you look at their work, most of them, most, more than half of my group have in, in the meantime died. There were over 90, there were 85. And where is their artwork? in some private houses, not in a museum, but here. And that is why I think it's a home for my friends, for my artists in these books. There might be a few exceptions, maybe. Um, I mean, foreigners or travelers that also concentrate on problems. I remember Deborah Koito, who is a photographer and a graphic artist. Maybe Omid and Roya know her, I'm not sure, from Vienna American University. And she came here and very quickly she um, was astonished by the amount of rubbish that yeah. pollutes the country. But when you have Egypt. lived here for 30 years, you don't see it anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, that's why she noticed it and she began um, actually a kind of photographic uh, yes. art story uh, mm -hmm. by taking the photo of these and uh, creating collages. was not very well received here on the island. Uh, I believe you, yes. Not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, she told me that she, she sold quite a lot. Uh, of these photos, so, yeah. It's also, it's also important, yes. Uh, my, I mean, I haven't mentioned photography uh, today. Mm. Uh, they are also in my book. And they paint a very positive, they are the ones who do also landscape photography. Mm. Very beautiful. I know them, I know most of them. And unbelievingly, they ha I think we have five different photography as associations and they're very proud and they meet regularly and they also have this group feeling 
of going out together and learn from each other. But uh, there is, they have been existing separately, the foreign residents and the locals. They have not mixed. Only when we started to go to exhibitions and, and, and museums and so on, they got to know local artists. I, I must say, it's not very positive what I say about the foreign artists. They keep to themselves. They don't mix. And this is, I think, that has also been the, uh, my motive to write about art in the English newspapers, to make them known, to uh, give them a push to get interested in, in the local art. Because when you don't know the culture and the local art, you don't know the island. You only know the restaurant you go to and have your beer. Yes, I I would, I mean, in the meantime, some of the people are interested and go to exhibitions, you know, but without any information, yeah. Let us hope things change. Let us hope for a museum so people can go and, and uh, see the art. And we have good art and good artists. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. The future belongs to the curious. This is an act of discovery. Come and experience it with us in Arakat and discover your creative potential. This is your path. This is your journey. You decide how it's going to be. Time to free your curiosity that's always in you. Come and experience it with us in Arakad and discover your creative potential. Office.